Hello and welcome to this uh, process video. I'm Tazigat and yeah, first I start by um, sketching in the figure. You can see I have my references set on the left of my canvas. I know my workspace is very claustrophobic <laughs> because it's so cluttered, but uh, if it works, it works. I usually have um, a pure ref file on my second monitor that is on the right as well with more references um but for this i wanted uh, the pose reference like right there on the screen so i start by just sketching in the big uh, pose and gesture i guess not really a gesture i'm terrible at gesture drawing i really have to practice this um but yeah just getting in the first few uh, lines to get an idea of like where the um, where the mermaid will sit and how the image will look overall. Like, like right now, I already noticed that my um, space, mm, uh, that the spaces between like the figure and the um, borders of the painting are a bit imbalanced. I th and I don't change this whatsoever throughout the whole painting. But now looking back at it, I think it would have been nicer if the figure was a little more centered in the end, I could have cropped the uh, left part as well, but um, I I didn't. <laughs> so it is how it is. But for, for the future, I think taking a bit more care with placing the figure um, would be good. But yeah, since this was done in one day, I just, I wanted it to be like done. Um, I'm fiddling around with the face because I think getting the proportions at least roughly right uh, is good so <laughs> it's good <laughs> anyway yeah just sketching a bit then the top reference on the left uh, i don't really use anything directly from it i just have it there for the wet hair basically and the more gloomy atmosphere although my color palette will be drastically different which we'll see like right about now, where I get to painting in the background, um, I really enjoy doing like the overall first color pass just with a hard round brush because it's super fast, even when working on big canvases. Because while I love my textured brushes, it bogs down the pro program, at least on my end, quite a lot. And then it very much disrupts the flow. So I just like the hard round. You can always blend it in later and add textures at um, specific points where you want it. <laughs> also something that I noticed, you'll see it right away. See, I put the um, horizon <laughs> in the reflection in the water, not on the right spot, but I do notice this and fix it. But it's so funny where like confidently, yeah, the pink goes here and then here I changed it when, when, when I was like, no, the pink actually does not go there. Also the color reference I just randomly came up with on my own, I guess. It's a little bit inspired by some um, paintings by Axel Sauerwald, I think is his name, um, where he did some mermaid paintings a few years ago that were kind of gloomy, so it's roughly inspired by those. Those were on my pure ref file, but um, generally I just, I kind of felt like this color scheme and um, put it in because I think it's very, um, very nice and intriguing. Yeah, and then we go to Painting in the first base layer color of the figure, it looks super strange right now because of the blue outlines, like Clip Studio has a function, I don't know if other programs have this easily accessible too, but Clip Studio has a function, function where you can turn any layer into a colored reference layer. Um, I usually just let it be the default blue, but it really helps. So I get in a few base colors and then here I start with getting some rough color ideas of where I want to go. This is also where the upper reference helped a bit because you can see the blonde model on the front um, left. Um, I think it's the same woman on the picture that I use for my pose reference. And there I can see that the blonde hair in like more gloomy lighting and wet looks pretty greenish. So I went with very green colors for the hair. This is also nice because then it matches the green in the background. So we have a little bit more color harmony going on. Um, instead if I had gone for like red hair or something, I think this would 
may not necessarily clash it just would be a very different look and i wanted it to be like like this <laughs> okay now i'm trying to define the face and it goes poorly at first but we'll get there <laughs> So I'm just getting in a few more um, features and where everything should go. Um, this is basically right about until now we did mostly painting except for the first sketch. And um, my other videos so far have also usually been just straight up painting. But here I kind of wanted to take care and felt like drawing a bit. While doing it I almost kind of regretted it that I um, started like with these fine drawings because um, historically, historically, <laughs> because usually I have a tendency to get really caught up in the line work when my end goal are paintings. Like if your end goals are more like illustration-y stuff like anime and uh, manga style illustrations where the line art shows a lot, then taking care with the line art I think is very important. But for something that I, but for the look I want to achieve, the line art is usually not even visible anymore. Anyway, like in, in the end, you'll see that almost no lines in my painting remain. So I was like, oh no, I'm getting hung up on the line art again. <laughs> but um, I think it turned out fine. I kind of reined myself in <laughs> a bit um, and did not go overboard with the line art because this is also where I always feel more tension in my hand because it's so fine detail work and so much jittering around as you can see and um yeah i have some wrist problems i know <laughs> who doesn't um but yeah the line art thing uh was kind of <laughs> now i lost track <laughs> but like i as i said i almost regretted uh, putting the line art, but it worked out in the end. I kind of liked how I did this workflow here because now I'm starting with putting in more of the values over the line art, which is not something that I usually do. I end up changing this layer to an overlay layer, I think, later on, and then painting on top of that. And I quite enjoyed this. It's more like a um, underpainting, I guess, in traditional painting, though I don't really have any clue about that. But um, I really enjoyed this workflow and I might try it out um, soon again because this this yielded great results. And um, it also, I also really try to not um, be too precise here because I knew I would go over it with more normal um, blend mode painting layers to get like the features defined and everything but right now i'm like oh god it looks terrible what am i doing <laughs> but uh i pushed on through and um yeah sometimes you just have to trust in the process i know it can be hard i have that feeling all the time <laughs> but um eventually it gets there and if sometimes it doesn't get there it's not really a problem either it's just live and learn some paintings go well and some fail so yeah okay then we're up to define the body and the hair a bit more because like the first sketch was very rough so i'm just defining everything a bit more of where exactly i want things to go also <laughs> i said this is where it definitely shows that my anatomy knowledge is very limited <laughs> because what i do think it looks roughly right <laughs> i am sure it's not actually right like the position of her elbow i kind of eyeballed <laughs> i guess <laughs> but um yeah and then we're drawing the hands this is also where the reference image on the left really comes in handy because in <laughs> handy haha <laughs> because i can zoom in on the reference and have it like right up next to my um painting like i've started putting the references right on my canvas only recently. Before that I usually had the references only in my pure ref file and, if, and I found that to be a bit harder to um, get some details right when uh, I had to like look to my second monitor so much so having the reference like right on my screen especially for something as fine and detailed as the face or the hands it's um, good.
Okay, so we're getting in a few more colors now. I'm just kind of eyeballing it because I know I can go over it with um, more like blending mode layers later, which I almost don't end up doing because I get the colors pretty on spot where I want them to be um, the first time which is very nice and I guess were the color studies I've uh, done in the previous weeks are already, are, already, are already starting to pay off. Yeah. And also, this picture is very low-key, like um, very dark overall, and the colors are also very muted. So it's... I don't want to say that it's not as necessary to get like super fine colors and everything, but um, if everything is so gray, then getting the right grays is, I think, at least for me, a bit easier than um, when working with super bright colors. Yeah, this is so funny. The ribs, the position of the ribs, I also just completely pulled out of nowhere, but I thought it would add a little bit of visual interest to this, um, her upper body part, because otherwise it would kind of be very bland and I think it also really adds to the atmosphere of this dark fantasy vibe I'm going for. Yeah. Okay, this is the point where I realized it looks so strange because the stone is missing, so I'm roughly putting in the stone. Here I take care to make it a nice shape. Like, first we have to clean up some um, edges and where the body overlays the stone and everything, but here I'm trying to make like super nice, um, like nice forms for the stone and everything. Then I realized that the arms need more shadows so that we can see the form turning a bit better. The lasso to tool is really, really helpful here. You can also see that I didn't make a perfect selection with the lasso, just kind of roughly, and then went over with an airbrush where the lasso selection wasn't um, particularly good. So don't stress out over getting the perfect lasso selection and lassoing for like 10 minutes or something. You can always just kind of fix it later. <laughs> And I found because I use because I used to stress out over getting the perfect lasso selection, and also if you see this with like other more experienced artists when they do lasso selections, it's always like it's pretty good. I mean, but it's not necessarily always the perfect, perfect like pixel perfect lasso selection, because we can always fix it later. And secondly, you have to think about how the um, image will be viewed later nobody will view it at full resolution because usually people don't even upload it in full resolution and if you for example see it on instagram or something or here in this video you don't see the perfect tiny pixels so it doesn't really matter if if the image gets shrunk down for the final viewing a lot of like super super fine little things like not having the perfect lasso selection don't really matter Okay, now we're tackling the face because it was really bothering me. Here I try to go with like um, dark eyes and then just glowing pupils, but I thought it looked kind of strange. So I uh, made the eyes white again, but kept the um, uh, pinkish pupils because I thought that, I don't know, pupils, irises. The pu she doesn't even have pupils. Anyway, I kept the pink to mirror the background because I thought this would um, be nice for the overall color scheme of the image and just also add a little more visual interest to her face because the pink contrasts with the surrounding like gray greenish colors. So yeah, and now it's just a rendering of the face. This is where the uh, reference image comes in handy. I also turned the face um, like sideways for both my painting and the reference because this way it's much easier for me to actually see the features better because I'm more used to seeing faces this uh, orientation and also we missed it just now but I think getting in the lip color is what really kind of elevated the face for me up until putting in the lip color I was like man this face is looking rough but then I put in the lip color and was like actually. 
now I'm zooming in more. As you see, previously I wasn't that far zoomed in because I think this gives me more... Um, I think this gives the entire painting and image a more flowy and intuitive look instead of going in like right away so uh, closely because then I get some painting artifacts that I end up keeping in the final because I just kind of like the texture and the form of them. Yeah, I'm trying to fiddle around with turning the form and getting the planes of the face roughly right. This is something that you just kind of have to practice a bit and then in the end you'll see. I mean, my planes aren't <laughs> nearly perfect. There are so many good videos on and the planes of the face and face tutorials and whatever and also for example stuff like putting in these highlights like on the nose on the bridge of the nose on the lips under the eyes um, in the corner of the eye like here <laughs> and everything just these small little things that s elevate the entire picture so much now i'm rendering the hair i erased out a bit because i wanted the hair and the head to have a different shape that it's kind of like straight on the top and then straight down with just the ear jutting out. I thought that would look nice so I wanted to have the entire hair shaped a bit differently. Also because her hair is wet it would be like closer to her head. This is also where the reference image on the top comes to mind and which is why I kept it around even though I didn't really use it all that much. But for the hair I usually really just don't stress out. I already liked the texture we had going on from just the random brush work we did before. This is what I mean when I said like keep it zoomed out and then just do some things and then maybe you end up liking what randomly happens. <laughs> what, did, what did Bob Ross say? Uh, tiny little accidents or something? Anyway, this is what I usually do because I think it really breathes life into the image. Now we're adding a few more highlights and details to the tail. I actually don't really now, like a few days later, a few days, two days later when I'm recording this, I don't particularly like the form of her tail, but um, yeah, this is also something I should have paid attention, I should have paid more attention to when I did the first sketch, like right in the beginning and then the first color lay in. But, you know, live and learn. Now we're going through the hands. This is so funny. Now that I'm looking back at this recording, the hands are actually the thing I spent the most time with, I think. I spent even a little more time on the hands than I do in the face and you end up don't even really seeing them all that much. This is something that I've noticed um, me doing a lot that I spend time on unnecessary details because I'm not that I'm not that good at evaluating where I have to uh, spend my time yet. But if, because I think right now if I didn't just a bit like a bit shadows for like defining the fingers and everything and then erasing out the um, lighter parts I think the hands would have been fine and I could have saved so much time on them, but um, here we are, rendering them for a very long time. Um, yeah. Also, you just saw me do a selection around the tail. Uh, I like to do this a lot when I just have certain parts where I don't want to go. I select the parts where I don't want to go and then invert the selection and then I can paint on everything but the parts where I don't want to paint. This is something that I think really comes in handy from time to time that you have to keep in mind that you can invert selections. So yeah, the hands. This is something funny. Here I turned on the blue reference layer and I was like, this actually looks kind of cool. I didn't end up going for something like this with an like effect or something, but I am keeping this in mind to just maybe get a few interesting colors in in something and then in a different painting but i didn't think it fit here and um yeah like you see the hands i mean they're looking a little more like hands but it's so unnecessary that <laughs> i'm spending so much time here <laughs> 
that was also so funny because I just didn't know where this light part under the hands came from. So I end up looking for it for minutes until I finally find it and erase it out because it was bugging me so much. But um, yeah, sometimes layer control is also a bit whack for me sometimes. But I really, I, I kept myself in check here quite uh, well, I think, and then end up with like a hundred layers or something. <laughs> I mean, the painting only was like three hours or so. Getting a hundred layers in three hours would have been a challenge anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Here I finally find where the uh, brighter outline comes from and erase it out. <laughs> finally. <laughs> Okay, then I'm taking a step back and see, oh my god, the stone is not rendered at all. It's just one solid block of color. So I go over the stone. Also, I think this really helps to reset your like visual mind a bit because I had spent so much time on the body, on the face and on the hands that I was getting kind of used to how uh, it looked and everything. So spending more time on the stone here kind of lets me forget a few details and then evaluate the uh, body and painting with like a fresher set of eyes. Of course, if you have the time and you can take like a, an hour, a break or something, or come back days later, this is something where I um, notice a lot of things when I come back uh, days later, uh, especially. But um, even just tiny things like refocusing on other areas, like doing a bit of the face, then doing a bit of the body, then doing a bit of the background and everything. I think that usually helps. Also here I'm uh, painting with the selection thing again and not having a perfect selection. What I mean here, I'm, I don't know what I did there because the um, bar on the bottom was bother bothering me because I didn't see where everything was. But uh, yeah, selection tool is awesome. Also, selection tool plus uh, airbrush is amazing because it gives you a hard and a soft edge in just one go. So, selection tool is mwah. <laughs> yeah, we're almost like we're close to finishing. And this is the part where um, we have to like see and evaluate a bit more where we can step back from the quotation marks rendering mind into a more analytical space where we can just put in a few more things that really help sell the image like for example um, I'm merging everything here because I found it a bit hard to use because I had accumulated so many layers and I was pretty confident in how it, everything looked so I knew I didn't have to change much so now that I've merged everything, I can focus again more on forms and details working with clipping masks. So I have like the entire rendered body and now I can, as you, as you just saw, I can darken the top a bit or like erase out parts of the tail where like five different layers would have been before. This is where I fix a bit of the arm. <laughs> I say fix, but wow. I mean, my anatomy knowledge is... Uh kind of limited, but it looked better now, at least to me. And um, yeah, <laughs> now, now we're getting to some of the juicy parts, putting in the reflection. This is something I was looking forward to since the beginning, because I think the reflection is so cool in the reference image and um, it also really helps to sell the scene. So I put in the reflection. And then I'm like, what? Something is not right. So I put it out again and <laughs> recopy it. <laughs> also, something I'm doing here is I'm squishing it a bit and then stretching it into the general perspective of the image. I'm not entirely sure actually if this is correct or not, but I felt like it. Then I'm fiddling around with um, the blending modes because um, I thought, hey, why not? And then I found that, I think it's on brightness, yeah. I found that brightness, like, Re was really good for the kind of effect I wanted. Then I'm going over with like a brush to put in a few like jittery things of the water 
and also with a blender to blend around the edges a bit so the reflection is not so perfectly clear just so um, it sells the effect of the reflection more yeah now we did a few more background things this is also where I stay pretty zoomed out for the most part and just get a feel for the overall image like where it needs a few more finishing touches yeah getting a bit more texture on the stone because I thought it would it was looking a little flat and yeah and this is also something cool this is something I wanted from like the beginning but it didn't put in at all because I knew if I did like this super thin strip of light on the horizon I wanted a bit of that light to reflect on the figure as well and this is also something that helps her feel more uh, inside the picture that she's like more inside of the entire thing now that the um, tiny 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 bit of rim light because as, I, as I've mentioned this is a very low-key scene and the lysers in the back is not very strong so the rim light isn't very strong either but I think it just makes the entire thing come together a bit more yeah now we're back to some finishing touches overall and um yeah and then I was like hey something something about the face <laughs> and um then I go in and add more stuff to the face all of these are very fine changes but I think you see me swapping around and um, evaluating like what I did and how it looked before and how it looks now but I think just these few small things at the end really pushed it forward but there's always a point where you just have to call it quits like I could have rendered this for five more hours but I don't think it would have like added that much to the image like these few touches that I did in I, can't, I don't know like 10 minutes 15 minutes like they I think they added a lot to um, the overall feel of the uh, image and the face just defining the values a tad bit more like darkening the bottom part getting in a few more highlights and everything um, helped a lot and it didn't take that much time so yeah I am signing the thing and um, evaluating it again do I see anything looking at the reference um, yeah something I noticed like later <laughs> when I had already finished the entire thing I think her feet are resting on the stone and her fin like in the reference image and her fin uh, in mine is not resting on the stone at all and it looks a little weird <laughs> to be honest but the entire part there is so dark that I don't think it's overly noticeable. Here I'm like, man, the tail shape is kind of strange. So I try to liquefy it a bit, but it doesn't end up working for me. So I just change it back. And um, yeah, that was about it. I hope this was helpful and that uh, my explanation was uh, like that my explanation was helpful and that you learned something and here are here's the finished version and a few close-ups so yeah i hope this was fun it was very fun for me i was pretty surprised by how it came out and um yeah thanks for watching bye